So the next part of FL Studio that I'm going to be showing you is the step sequencer. And again, you can bring it up either by clicking here or by pressing F6. And the window of the step sequencer basically acts as two things. One of which is basically a rack where you can keep your samples, do different uh, generator VSTs or you know different synthesizers, different audio clips, different automation clips, all, all that kind of stuff. And then it's also used as a step sequencer. What I'm going to show you first is how to add different samples and plugins and stuff to the step sequencer. Now it's pretty intuitive, it's pretty quick, and it's pretty simple. Uh, there are a few different ways to get your channels in there. And my favorite method is just from the browser you can click on something and if you hold, if you click and hold and then drag, it just brings it right in to the step sequencer. You can also right click on a sample and tell it to open in a new channel. You can open it in a few different types of channels here, but I'm not going to go too much into that in this video. If you want to play around with it, feel free to, but for now I'm just going to tell it to open in a new channel. Now if you want to replace a sample that you've already added in, you can once again just drag and drop it over to replace it. And what you can also do is hold down control and click. And you can see it just replaced it. And that's just kind of a time saver if you need to replace like a clap. You don't like the sound of your clap anymore or you don't like the sound of your kick, whatever. You can just browse it and as soon as you hear the right one, it'll be there for you. And there, there are a few other options. Uh, that you can get by right-clicking on a channel. And if you want to get rid of something you have, you can just right-click to delete it. And if you want to clone a channel you have, like maybe you want to add some different effects or whatever reason, you can just right-click and then clone. Now, if you have a number of different channels that you want to delete, you can select them all by clicking and dragging, or if you don't want to select them in a line, you can right click to select them independently. And then go up to the channels and delete selected, which you can also use the shortcut Alt Delete. Okay, now I'm going to start getting together a drum kit for my song. So I have a kick, a clap, a hi-hat, crash. Okay, now there are a number of different ways for you to organize your channels in your project. One of which is by renaming and recoloring. And you can do this by right clicking and going to the rename slash color option, which I'm going to call this my kick. And I'll just color it the nice purplish blue. And there you can see it's renamed and recolored. But a quicker way to do that is just using the middle mouse button. And it brings up that menu automatically. And this one I'm going to call clap. And I'm going to kind of color them different shades of blue, just relevant to kind of what frequency range they're in. Uh, you can color them however makes sense to you. I, I usually don't do a whole lot of organization in my tracks. 
I just try to get the ideas down as they come to me and they come pretty quickly. But, you know, some people would prefer to be more organized than others and you know, just figure out what works for you. So, crash. Now, one thing I do like to do is I like to organize their order by the frequency range as well, or by related sounds. So how you can do that, how you can move the different channels around is when you've highlighted one, or you can highlight a few of them, then what you do is hold down Alt and press the up or the down arrow keys. And you can move them around like that. I want the snare to be right, right there. So that's pretty good. And then again, you can right click to select or deselect them individually to move them around. Or you can, you know, click and drag if you want to move a number of them. But I'm pretty happy with this arrangement. Now, what I do want to do is group these samples. So what I'm going to do is Normally I would select all of them to put them in the same group, but for the sake of this video I'm only going to select half at a time. And then once you have them selected you can go to the channels and, oops, and select group selected. And I'm going to name this filter group drums. And you can see down here it says drums. And the other ones are in unsorted. Now if you want to add samples to a group that's already been made, you just do it the same way. Channels, group selected, and then type in drums again. And you can see they're all under the drums category, and nothing's under unsorted. So if later on in a song you found that you either put some samples in the wrong group, or they are in unsorted and you want them in a group, you can add them to an existing group like that. But if you want to add new samples or plugins or whatever directly to a group, all you have to do is be in that group and then drag in your new sound. And you can see it's not in unsorted, it's in drums. Now you can add filter groups before you put in samples by right-clicking on the filter display here and selecting add filter group. And I'm going to call this filter group synths. Because this is where I'll be adding my different synthesizer plugins. Now if you want to add a synthesizer plugin, there are a few different ways to do this as well. You can go up to the channels menu, add one, and then select from you know a number of ones that come with, or you can add in your own. And again, I'm not going to cover that in this video, but in the description, I will have a link to how to install your own VST plugins. So if you want to, if you have a VST plugin that you want to install, you can check that out. But for right now, I'm going to add an auto gun. And another way to add in a plugin is to right click on an existing channel and select to insert one. And then you can insert you know, a different synthesizer. And if you want to replace something that you have in there, you can right click it, select replace, and then select a different plugin. You can also bring in plugins from either the browser or the plugin picker 
by finding them and clicking them and dragging them in. So to get up the plugin picker, you can right click here. And it's pretty cool because it organizes the different plugins in a few different ways. And you can see um, it'll show the different samplers, different MIDI controllers, drum generators, or drum related plugins. And what I want is another synthesizer. So I can just now click it and drag it in. And if you've saved your own presets, you can drag them in from the browser as well. So these are all Citrus presets from my second uh, dubstep pack. And you know, you can just drag them in directly from the browser, which is pretty cool. Thanks for watching my tutorial video. I hope you found it to be helpful. If you want to learn more, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can watch new videos as soon as I upload them. After that, check out the Beat School website. I'll have the link in the description. All my tutorials are organized on the site so that you can easily find what you need by browsing through the different categories. There are also a ton of awesome resources to help you in every aspect of music production. And if you want to help support me, you can buy any of my sample packs, preset packs, or project files for only $5 or less. This gets you some great sounds for a great price and allows me to spend more time making these tutorials and working on the website. Thanks again for watching my video and have a great day.